you know what? Let's go back to my roots and let's talk about window managers. Even on the Wayland side, there is going to be a window manager component, but usually it's going to be the same binary as the compositor itself. So on Linux, we have two primary window management models. The first one being floating or stacking. These words mean the same thing. Usually desktop environments are going to refer to it as stacking. In the window manager space, you will often see floating. So this is the same thing that Windows does, that KDE does, that GNOME does, that macOS does. This is where I can show you, you spawn a window like this one here, and then you can just place it anywhere you want on the screen. You can just resize it, put it here, get another one. Let's put it over here. You can have them overlapping. That's why it is stacking, because you can stack windows on top of each other. The other model, and even though I've been using KDE for quite a while now, it is the model I prefer. That is tiling, where you spawn a window and it is automatically placed under a certain set of rules dictated by the system you're using. Now, some systems give you more control than others, but there's always going to be some underlying system controlling this placement. So let's move that window over here, spawn another one, and I'm not controlling where this is being placed, it is just taking up that space. Even though I called it one, tiling isn't really a model unto itself, it's more of a catch-all term for a bunch of different models. There is manual tiling where you select the direction that windows are going to be split, and then the window is automatically placed based on your input. Then you have dynamic tiling where there are preset layouts like master stack, like grid, or a bunch of other layouts, and you can switch between those layouts and it automatically replaces the window based on the layout you're in. And when you spawn a window, it automatically gets spawned into that layout. Or there is a very niche system, the system we're messing around with today. As it looks right now, this kind of looks like a normal tiler, but if you use one, you probably notice that this seems weird. This is not behavior you would normally see a tiler do. Normally the windows would take up the entire screen. Let's spawn a window, and let's spawn another one. And another one. And another one. Now, these windows are not being closed. Let's make that a bit smaller, make that a bit smaller, this is what is referred to. There's not really a good term for it. People kind of use different terms based on how they feel about it. Scrollable tiling window manager, scrollable window manager. I'm going to just refer to them as a scroller. We are still tiling, but unlike a regular tiler where you spawn a window and then each new window you spawn ends up cutting this space, we are not limited to the space that is available in our display, we have an effectively, obviously limited by computing resources, horizontal space where we can just spawn as many windows as we want. Of course, that becomes very quickly annoying to use and you wouldn't actually want to spawn this many windows, but there is no hard limit on the amount you can actually spawn. As many as you want, as many as your system is going to allow, you can spawn. And this eliminates a very common complaint with a tiler, where I spawn another window here, let's do this, and let's do this, and I spawn another one. It's a bit awkward to do this in a scroller, it's not exactly made to do this. Now that we're at this point, unless we're dealing with, say, a terminal like this, you can't really fit that many windows on the screen. Realistically, you can get away with maybe this. In a lot of cases, this is going to be your limit, and then you have to use workspaces to spawn more. In this case, though, you can have a layout like this sitting right here, spawn something right next to it, and then just go between it. Nothing stopping you. I've used a tiler on a laptop. I personally don't have an issue with it, but I do hear from a lot of laptop users, they like the idea of tiling, but they don't like how small windows end up getting, and they can't really justify using it. Here, you don't have that size limitation because you replace it with just more space. And another great thing about this is I can have a maximized window here, and a maximized window here. So I can go between these. I can then have something else here maybe. So we have this layout here, we're doing some stuff. Then I have a maximized window here and here. 
right? Like, you don't have to use workspaces for this. All of this is just on a single workspace. And speaking of maximized windows, this is one of the biggest problems with a floating environment as well. You can't really have multiple full-size floating windows. If I do this and I make this one floating as well, well now, let's say we wanna make this one bigger. So like this window is mostly covered. So we've got to like make it smaller and do all this like weird finicking around. I don't have to do that. If I want to have multiple windows, full size, like, yeah, I, like, I, I, I just can. Literally nothing is stopping me here. And I've already kind of shown this, but you're not limited to the way the windows are initially placed. Like, if you don't want this window to be next to this window, I can take this and just move it over here. Obviously make it smaller so we can see something's happening. And now it's next to these ones. If I want to go put it over there, I can do that. If I want to maybe stack these ones on top of each other, that's also an option as well. All of this is available. It's still a Tyler model at its core. It's just a Tyler without the limit of your horizontal space. Also, as I'm using Neri, this is going to depend on the specific environment you're using. So this might just be a bit of a Neriism. If you want to go and use mouse controls to do that as well, that is an option here as well. So I can drag this window holding down the super key, put it there. We have a bit more of a stack. I can put it back here. I can resize this with my mouse as well. All of the nice things you would expect to see in pretty much every other environment you have. Just because you're in something called a tiler or a scroller doesn't mean you have to do every single thing with keybinds. Now, using keybinds are going to unlock a lot more functionality, but just the basic stuff of moving around windows, totally accessible using your mouse as well. And what'll make things even more powerful, again, this may not be the case in every single environment, but because this is a tiler of some sort, you're usually gonna have access to some sort of IPC system or some way to interact with the environment through the terminal. So if you're someone who is more programmery minded and you want to do something like, as an example, say I want to go and uh, spawn a window and then automatically place it into this stack. That is something that can be done if you start playing around with this as well, much like you can on Sway or i3 or BSPWM or most of the other really good window managers out there. So it should be noted that whilst you can use this in part like a Tyler, like a BSPWM or a DWM, it is still its own subset of the tiling space. So doing this idea of splitting a column, which in Nero you can do with super and then comma. It is a little bit more awkward than being out of spawn a window and it automatically goes into that layout. So I can spawn another one here, put that one there. We effectively have a grid layout now. If I do it like this, spawn a window here, put that one there. We basically have a master stack. This is not the primary way to use Neri or use another scroller, but it is something that is still available there. If you want a more Tyler-like experience most of the time, but you still want that flexibility of having more space to work with if you want to expand outside of your singular monitor. But if you are looking for some of the more complex layouts, this is not the place to be. Yes, it is a Tyler, but it is a very special kind of Tyler and you are going to be disappointed. As an example, we have hard set columns that you cannot go and split into sub columns. So this window here is a column and these three windows make up another column. Spawning this window, this window here is a column as well. This is important because in a lot of tilers, what you could do is rotate this layout. So this window here would take up the entire top part of the screen and these three would split the bottom into thirds. That would be creating columns where the borders don't align and that is not a thing you can do here. Whilst we may have infinite horizontal space, that doesn't mean that is our only option. As I said before, this can get very cluttered very quickly and you just realistically cannot work like that. Well, there's no reason why even though this replaces a lot of the workspace functionality, 
we can't also use workspaces, and that is something we have access to here. I can spawn a window here, and this is on a distinct workspace from the first one. All that stuff is still there. If you want to see a more overview in Neri, we do have the option of the overview as well, and that is nice. Not everything is going to have this, but it is very convenient to make use of in this space. But even though we have workspaces, I find they serve a very different function. On a tiler, on a floating environment, there's sort of a necessity to allow you to functionally make use of more windows. Because on a floating environment, things get very cluttered very quickly, it becomes hard to find windows, and it's just not convenient to use. On a tiler, you literally run out of space to make use of windows effectively, so it is a necessity to have workspaces to have more than realistically like four or five windows open. Here we don't have that issue. Here we can just keep expanding horizontally, so workspaces serve as more of a logical grouping of things you want to be doing. You might have the development workspace, and then the relaxing workspace, the gaming workspace, but they could all be on the same workspace if you wanted to, there's nothing stopping you doing that. But by having them on separate workspaces, it makes them convenient to access. So as I've been using Nero over the past couple of days, I find myself way less reliant on workspaces. In the past, I would use them constantly because I kind of had to. Here, I really don't need them that much. Much like the good regular tilers, when you're talking about a good scroller, it's not necessarily going to be only scrolling. We do, as I showed you earlier, have access to floating windows if that is something you want to use in certain contexts. Now, I have my window decorations turned off, that's just the way that I like it. They don't have to be disabled, you can have them there and have the nice buttons, maximize, close, minimize, all that stuff that you want to normally have there, I just don't particularly like it. Uh, also, I don't think minimize is going to work in Neri anyway. I don't think so, I've not tried it. Not important. But you are going to be missing out on some of the things you would often get in a pure floating or stacking environment. You know, things like edge snapping, or you can bump it into the side and it like full screens the window, or like half screens the window. This is not a floating environment, but there are cases where you might want to have a floating window, like I'm currently doing with the notes for this video, because it just doesn't really make any sense to place them in a tile right now. And this will not be the case for everything, but Niri also has support for tabbing. So I can collapse this entire column into a tabbable segment. I'm going to open a B-top here, so you can actually see as I change through things. But this is really cool, right? And just because you're in a scroller, or a tiler, or a floater, or anything else that might exist, it doesn't mean it has to be exclusively that model. And I really do like the systems where they provide you a bit of flexibility into other models, but still has that core focus on the thing they want to do. Neri and other scrollers are scrollers first. But there are cases where having other things could be useful, so let's provide them as well. Now, let's say you're convinced and you want to try out a scroller. What options do you have? Well, scrolling is quite niche. There's not really that many options out there. As I mentioned, I have been messing around with Niri in this video. Niri is based on the Smithy library, which, if you might know, is the library being used by the Cosmic Desktop, but for some reason it makes use of the GNOME desktop portal. Don't entirely know why. The portal's fine, no issue with it whatsoever. It just seems like a very strange choice. It has a lot of support for various different protocols, and Niri is generally just all around a good choice. It's also basically the only dedicated choice you have available. So, <laughs> as I said, very niche kind of model. There are things like Endless WM, which haven't been updated in a very long time. This is basically a proof of concept. Another proof of concept is something called Cardboard. This one's actually been archived and hasn't been updated in basically the same length of time. If you don't like the idea of Neri, if you don't want a Rust project, or whatever other reason you might not like Neri, 
you're pretty much going to be reliant on plugins for other environments. And that's not a bad thing, because a lot of these plugins are relatively good, but they come with the drawbacks of using plugins. They're limited to what the environment lets them do. They might break between versions. So just keep that in mind. One of them is something called Paper WM. This is for the GNOME shell, and this was a heavy inspiration for Neri and part of the reason why this is making use of dynamic environments like GNOME has, making use of the GNOME portal and things like that. Another one you have is something called Carousel. This is for the KDE environment. I've not played with it myself. I cannot really comment on the quality of it, but it is something that does exist. If you do like the Sway environment, you have the option of using Scroll. Now, Scroll isn't a plugin. This is actually a fork of Sway. Another option in that regard is something called Paper Sway. As you can guess, it's inspired by Paper WM. If you like the Hyperland ecosystem, here we do have some plugins. We have Hyper Scrolling and also Hyper Slider. I've not played with either of them. This one seems to be far less frequently maintained. It appears to still be working with modern versions, but this one seems far more actively developed. This is the one that Vaxry himself is actually... Why is Vaxry making this? Whatever. This is the one that Vaxry is making. And if you happen to be a macOS user, you have the option of paperwm.spoon. I guess the dot .spoon is because it's for the hammer spoon environment, and it literally just uses the name paperwm, so it's pretty obvious where it got the inspiration from. As you can tell, a lot of things here got their inspiration from paperwm, because... Really, that's one of the few things that is very actively developed. Before Neri, there really wasn't that good of an option to go with. So I'm very happy this exists because it actually gives me the chance to mess around with this idea and just see how it clicks with me, see how it feels with me. And honestly, I genuinely like it. I have been using it now for the past couple of days. I've still been using KDE for a couple of videos, but outside of that, been using Neri, and I really like it. I really like it. And I kind of hope someone makes a scrolling plugin for Cosmic as it gets closer to full release, or maybe sometime post full release, because this is a model where it seems a little bit odd when you first try it out, but when it clicks with you, it really clicks, and I genuinely, I genuinely love this model. I've been using it quite a bit outside of recording videos. I've been using KDE for a lot of videos, but now I've fully decided to entirely swap over. There are little things I needed to deal with, which I'll talk about in my dedicated Neri video, but... I would highly encourage that you go and try out a scroller and just see what it's like. If you want to use it on top of GNOME or KDE or Hyperland or Sway, you can go and do so, but just mess around with it. See if you like the idea. If you don't, hey, get rid of the plugin. If you do, well, maybe there are more you can try out. Maybe things like Neri, which I will talk more about in my dedicated Neri video. Don't you worry about that. So... I like scrolling, and I hope you do too. If you like video, go like video. If you really like video, if you've used the scroller before, let me know your thoughts down below, and um, yeah, tell me if you liked it or didn't like it. Anyway, if you really like the video, and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe, silly very pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and they see me scrolling. Yeah.